Hey guys, so today we're going to be making this environment in Blender. Uh, it's been requested that I make a tutorial for it for a little while now. I made it back in uh, 2020 at the start of the year. It's had quite a bit of attention. So we're going to go ahead and make this. First of all, you want to come over to textures.com. It'll be the top link in the description. And download each of these textures in medium or small. It's up to you. I've gone for medium. It's completely free. You can make an account up in the top right. And you get 15 free credits a day. I use it a lot for basic environments. So just come through, download each medium, and you're fine. Put them somewhere you'll remember. And then you want to come over to the second link in the description, which will be this. And this is going to be the head that we're going to put at the end of the corridor. Click here, download 3D model, and download it in an OBJ format. Once you've done that, come into Blender, start up a fresh scene, and we're going to delete everything. I'm pressing A then X and pressing delete. And I'm going to put on my screencast keys just so you can see them. And I'm going to move them slightly. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I want to press Shift and A, add in a plane, come into your top view by pressing 7 on your number pad or pressing the Z up in this top right corner up here. And we're going to go S, Y, We'll, we'll try five for now. We'll try five. We can always resize it, it doesn't matter. And press tab to go into your edit mode. And we're going to press control and R to add a loop cut. Bring it kind of close to where we're going to put the camera. The camera's going to go here and we're going to look down the corridor. So once you've placed that by left clicking, press two on your normal, uh, normal numbers to go into edge select. Click this edge here. Press E and then X to extrude it out on the uh, right here. I'm going to extrude it just a little bit. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Control R around there. That's fine. Two again. Click this edge. E, X. And I'm going to just bring this all the way out here. Because this is going to be off camera. But we want to give the illusion that it's an ongoing corridor. So once we've done that, select all of these outer edges here. Just like this. Holding shift. Don't select these two back ones because it will obstruct the camera. And then once you've selected all those, we don't need to select this one either, it's irrelevant. Press E then Z. Bring it up. Just a, a nice amount. Something like that. And to get everything set up, so we can we know the scales and everything, come to the top right hand side of your viewport here. Your mouse pointer turned from a mouse pointer to a crosshair looking thing. And then you click and drag out, just like this. And it opens up a second viewport. I'm going to press T. Uh, this little button here, which shows gizmos, it's going to disable that. I'm going to turn off overlays as well. And we're going to have this as our camera viewport. So come over back to your left hand side viewport. Back into object mode by pressing tab. Shift A and add a camera. And then press N and we're going to go to item. Put your X at... 90, your Y at 0, and your Z at 0, and I'll be straight on. And then over here, press 0 on your numpad, or you can bring your gizmos back up if you don't have a numpad, and click this little camera button here, and that'll take you into camera view. Okay, disable them again. I'm going to grab the camera over here, move it up slightly, and move it back. Very nice. And then come into your output properties tab. And I'm going to change mine to 1500 by 1500 because I rendered this for Instagram and Instagram likes square photos. And I'm just going to make it fit. I think I used a 40mm lens when I did this a while ago. And then just position your camera so it looks right. I think that looks good, just like that. And then that's your camera done. And over here you can. Uh, you can go into rendered view. I'm gonna do it. You don't need to. If you if your computer isn't great, you don't have to, but I'm gonna do it just so you can see on the right hand side how everything looks. Come back to your main environment here. Press tab. I'm gonna control R this horizontal loop cut. Actually, before we do that, we are going to fill this face, or I forgot. So we can have a loop cut all the way around and it's consistent. So control R just down. Yeah, that's about right. And come into your face select mode by either clicking this button here or pressing 3 on your keyboard. Then hold Alt 
and click any of the vertical lines. So this one, this one, that one. Alt click just like that and it will select the whole loop. And then we're going to press Alt and E and then extrude faces along normals. Click that and then move your mouse up slightly. I like to hold shift to get a more precise movement and bring that out just a little bit, just like that, very nice. And then this is kind of the main room done pretty much, we just need to texture it. Okay, so now we're going to add the ceiling of the environment. So come into your edge select mode by pressing two, alt click this edge and press F, just like that. So we have the roof and we're gonna come into front view here Shift A, add a cube, bring it, shrink it all the way down with S, and then nice and small, just like that. Tab into edit mode, press 1 to go into vertex, select, then hold Z, and come to wireframe. Select these top vertices, bring it up, just like that. And I'm going to press Ctrl R, add in a loop cut, and bring that up, and then Press 3 to go into face select, click this edge, and extrude it out, just like that, and I'm just going to clean that up a bit, bring that up slightly, there we go, very nice, and then we're going to just position this, so it's right in the corner, just like that, and come into top view, where are we, and put it there. And if it doesn't look long enough, like mine doesn't, you can always select the edges and move them out, just like that. It also looks too short. So I'm gonna bring it down slightly. There we go. Okay, and then we're gonna come back into object mode by pressing tab, come up to the object here, set origin, origin to geometry. And it's just gonna make it easier to flip for us. So we're gonna shift D, I'm just going to duplicate it, then right click so it doesn't move. Then we're going to press S, X, minus 1, just like that. And move it over to this line here, which is our other wall. Just like that. And come into your top view. And move it forward down the corridor. Put that there. So now if we come to solid view. We have these lights, they're in, looks nice. So, I'm gonna put, click this uh, first light here, come to your objects, uh, into your material panel. Click new, click uh, surface here, emission. And we're gonna make it pink with a strength of, we'll say 10 for now. And then, so that looks very nice on the right there. I'm gonna click each of these by holding shift like this and then make sure you click this one with the material last so it's active and then we're going to hold control and press l and link materials and each one will have the material i'm going to get rid of this back one actually i don't think we need it yeah okay so let's get the modeling done so we want to Put a little podium in this section here. So we can come them into edit mode, select this face, hold shift and press S, put cursor to selected. Back into object mode, shift A, add a cube, shrink it down to about there. Into your front view and just bring it up about there. That's fine. Um, come to your top view by pressing 7 or the Z again. Into your wireframe. And press holding Z, and then I'm just gonna drag it into the back wall here. Oh, we're in the uh, little skirting board here. There we go. Don't worry about this bulging out, you cannot see it in the render. It looks perfectly fine the way it is. You can press the uh, dot on your numpad if you want to zoom into an object as well. So I'm gonna bring it forward, shrink it down just slightly. Make sure it touches the floor. I'm going to just bring these verts down so I can get it how I want it. Okay. And we're going to come into face select mode. And then just 
I to inset a face and then E to extrude. And we're just gonna do that a few times. And then we're going to delete this face. Come into edge select mode, hold alt and click this top ring here. Shift S, cursor to selected. Come into your object mode. Object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So now, when we come here into your modifier properties, add a modifier, add a mirror modifier, deselect X and put it on Z with clipping. We've now got a nice podium. And you can smooth it by pressing control one or two, if you want. That looks quite nice. I'm not gonna, just for the sake of the render, but you can do that if you want. So we are going to apply that. I'm going to select this face, shift S, cursed to selected. And then here you want to import OBJ and import your head, wherever you save it. And it's going to be huge. <laughs> it is very big. So just press the dot on your uh, numpad, shrink it down by, with S. And we're going to shift S, selection to cursor, just like that. And just shrink it down till it looks about right. How does it look? I'd say that's about right. Okay, so have we got the material here? We do, but I'm going to add a new one. I'll call it head. I've got caps lock on. And we're going to go to the shading tab up here at the top. Press the dot again. And we're going to drag in these textures. So you want your color and your normal. Your color goes into the base color, just like that. And your normal should be non-color. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a plugin thing, but if it is, you can come up here to edit, preferences, add-ons, and search node and enable node wrangler here. Press shift A and type normal and put normal map. And then put the color to the color and the normal to the normal and there you go you have all your detail in looks clean and while we're at it let's add the uh, floor material here so i'm going to add a second material to here and select these faces the four faces select the second material assign a new so what you want to do then is Control shift and t on your principal bsdf just like that it will be here or wherever you saved it. You want to select the albedo, the height, the normal, and the roughness, and we're gonna put the AO in after. So there you go, everything should be in. It's not gonna look very nice. So what we want to do is press U and unwrap. It's going to be huge again, just like the head. So you want to come over to scale, hold left click, hold shift, and drag down, and it will select all three. I'm gonna try five. Okay, five is still too stretched. So what we want to do is come to your top view here, press U and project from view bounds. And there you go. Everything will be nice and uh, projected properly. It's not the best practice to do that, but because it's just a still render, it doesn't really matter. It looks nice and it works. I could change this to three, I think, possibly. Yeah, a nice bigger squares. Uh, that seems to work nice. Okay, and then what we're going to do is delete this displacement because we're not using actual displacement. Delete that, drag these over. Shift A, add in a bump, just like that. Put the height into the height and the normal into the normal and then drag this into the new normal slot, just like that. And you get better detail. If I come back into object mode, you can see the detail, it looks a lot nicer. Okay, so we're done with the uh, actual textures we can just use solid colors now real quick i'm adding this in while i'm editing uh, i forgot to add the ambient occlusion to the tiles so we're going to do that now so drag in your texture drop it near your color because we're going to be multiplying it with against the core shift a search for mix and select the mix rgb and drop it in between base color and your principal so it connects the two and then put the color into color 2 
just like that. And you want to apply the vector as well, so it's on the same length as everything else. And change mix here to multiply. And I like to go for one of a factor, so it's really dark shadows. It looks a lot nicer. I turn that to zero, you can see there's sort of not as good shadows there. If I turn it to one, you get dark shadows. That's all there is to it, it's really simple. So back to the regular video. So you want to come back to your layout, and you can see how nice it already looks. So for the rest of the room, we want these back walls to be a, a dark grey. So I'm going to new and assign, and bring the colour down to around there, and I'm going to give it some roughness. Which is about a 0.75, something like that. The only thing we have to texture here is this bit and this bit. I'm going to new material, assign, pretty much grey and a high roughness. very last thing we have to do before rendering is come here, white, spot, uh, GY, GZ, and what do we want to rotate on? Rotate it on the X, RX, and just position it, just like that. Uh, I'm going to go to EV real quick just so I can see better, so there's no noise. Okay, and then come to your light, turn the strength up just a bit, turn that down, turn the size up, turn the blend up, just like that. On a quite strong light, there we go. I'm just going to give this a solid white texture as well with some roughness. If you want, you can go back to textures.com and find a nice marble or something, you know, to make it a bit more realistic. I'm just going to stick with this plain white though, I think it looks quite nice. Okay, so come back to cycles once you've done that. And I believe we're ready to render, almost. So come to your render properties tab. Go to color management and change your look to at least high contrast or medium high. I'm going to change the world to quite a pale pink as well. Just like you come into your world properties and change the color to a pink. I believe that is good. Let's give it a render and see. Okay, so now that's rendered. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. I'd possibly round off the corners of this podium and maybe make this texture smaller. But other than that, I'm very happy with it. So let's move on to processing the image. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to change this to 512 in the render viewport. Um, and I'm going to add adaptive sampling and denoising in the render. Just like that. And then everything will be noise free. Very high quality samples. So here's the outcome of the render. If you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe, drop a like and leave a comment. Let me know what else you'd like to see on this channel. I'm open to any ideas and I'll catch you all in the next video.